beautiful little spot this it's about an hour's walk from where I live in Sheffield down there but in that tower you leave the noise of suburbia the housing the tarmac the traffic and the people you leave all them behind and in no time at all you're up here on the wild moorland overlooking the city of Sheffield it's November and the light is starting to go I reckon I've only got about an hour of daylight left so I'm gonna get on get my Sulu tent pitched here so I should be able to look out the door over the city of Sheffield once we've got it pitched I'll come back to you we'll get all the gear in and then we can make a start at cooking tonight's meal I reckon we'll be cooking in the dark tonight see you in a little bit That's my Sulu tent all set up, just in the process of moving all my gear in. It's surprising what extra gear you bring. We're in November now, so it's getting a bit cool at night. Got a heavier sleeping bag, my uh, X-Bed mattress, uh, my pillar, and some down boots to keep my four feet warm. But it all adds to the weight you have to carry so I'll finish off getting uh, everything set up might have a drink then just warm me through the light's gonna probably go in about an hour and it, it starts to go a bit misty and that but if you've not already guessed tonight's meal is chili and rice using my favorite cooking pan a frying pan gonna make it out of uh, all fresh ingredients we've got some minced steak onion tin of tomatoes uh, spices uh, chili powder chili flakes just to hot it up a bit and of course some red kidney beans get all that cooked gonna have it with uh, some uh, boiled rice so it should make a nice filling meal pretty easy to do I think uh, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to having a drink next warm myself up a bit so once I've got everything set up I'll come back to you and we'll we'll get on with uh, tonight's meal So, gonna make a start at cooking this chilli. Bit of oil. Then I've got some onion. I've cut this up at home, this. I must admit, I double bagged it and it's still, you could still smell the onion. So it's just a matter of moving the onion round and getting it sort of softened. So that's the onion sort of softened. I've got 200 grams of minced steak that's going in now so again it's just a matter of browning that with the onion so to give the chili its taste putting in chilli powder that is more 
to flavour it. So we'll get that lot mixed in. And then to spice it up a bit and make it a bit hotter, I've got these chilli flakes. They are really hot, so I've not put too many in. Well, that will sort of make the, the chilli have quite a kick to it. Next is a tin of tomatoes. Mix all that in. And then the last thing to go in is the red kidney beans. So then it's just a matter of mixing all this up. It's got all the spices, red kidney beans, tomatoes, onion and mince. So I'm just going to give that a good mix. I don't know if I can turn this simmer down. So all I want to do now is really simmer that for uh, probably about 10 minutes, something like that. I think it's, it's, I reckon it's cooked through, but it could do about another 10 minutes and it'll, all the spices will go into the meat and I know it will be cooked through them. So I think I can say the chilli's cooked. That's had about, uh, another 10 minutes. So I'm going to put that just to one side on my makeshift table. Should be all right there. And now with chili, I like a bit of rice. So we're going to boil some water up and cook a bit of rice. Shouldn't take too long. So that's the water on. Just going to drop some of this rice in. I've got about 80 grams, something like that. That should do for the rice. So the rice still needs a, a bit longer. What I've been doing is, is taking the rice off and then putting the chilli back on because I suppose the rice, it is still cooking in the hot water. So we'll just warm the chilli back through. So it'll stay hot in the frying pan and I can just add this rice. Nice fluffy white rice, goes nice with the chilli. So there we have it, chilli and rice, that does look nice. Mm. That's very nice that, I'm going to sit and enjoy that. Mm. 
lovely taste, very nice, very spicy. How I kind of like it. I did read somewhere that if you eat spicy food at night, because it keeps your digestive system going, it's making your body work and it keeps you warm. So that's my thoughts anyway. Everything's cooked through. The rice, that seemed to cook, just be leaving it in the hot water while I rewarm the chilli. So you don't have to have it boiling all the time. Quite a bit of messing about, but that's my idea of wild camping, is to do something different, try different meals. Um, even if it does take a bit of effort and it doesn't always work out, at least you've tried something different. Well, I thought that chilli were really nice, just like I cook at home. Not the easiest ones to cook while wild camping. Uh, but I like to try something different. And yeah, it was very nice and it, it has filled me up. I was just looking out the tent door and I can see the lights of, uh, of Sheffield. Um, they look quite impressive. We are quite high up, so we are looking down on the city. So I'm gonna pop outside with my camera Try a bit of video, see what that works out like. But with exploring the railway tunnels and the underground drains, I've sort of got used to taking long exposures. So I don't, they might work out. We'll have to see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try some uh, like 20, 30 second exposures of the the lights of the city, and see what they work out like. I may be some time. Oh, that's nice. Nice and warm. And I've been out there for ages. I must have been out there for two hours. I saw all the lights of the city and I, I tried to video it. See how that works out. It's not always so clear and detailed so then I thought I'll try a few still photographs now having spent quite a bit of time this year exploring railway tunnels and drains I've got used to taking long exposures so I thought I'd do a few long exposure like cityscapes and hopefully they've worked out uh, but I kept altering the ISO I were taking 25 second exposure, something like that. And then I thought, well, I know what, I'll put my headlamp inside the tent to give that a bit of a glow and try some cityscapes with the, the tent in the foreground. I think they've worked out okay, we'll have to see. But the trouble is, because I'd put my headlamp in, in the tent, I'd only got this little light so I've been stumbling about in the heather with my camera and my tripod, setting it up at different angles. The wind picked up and it is a lot colder, but I thought I've just, I've just got to take a few more. I've got to take a few more of these photographs. So each one, say with 20, say 20 second exposure, it's supposed to be perfectly still. The wind was blowing, so I've had to, press the tripod into the ground, press the shutter and hopefully keep it as still as possible for the 25 seconds or so, then let it process and you don't really know what the pictures are like until you put them on the computer. But we'll have a look at them and I'll uh, I'll talk, talk you through them. Where's me? But I'm glad to be back in the tent now. As you can hear, the wind's got up a bit and it has got a bit a bit cool like so it's nice to have a warming drink I think I'll have this and uh, 
probably getting my sleeping bag and uh, settle down for the night, I think. Uh, hope those photographs work out. See you in the morning. Now, not all the photos worked out. Basically, there was no solid ground to keep the tripod still. A lot of the time, I was on the heather and the wind was blowing, so there was no way I could keep it still. A few of them did work out, and that was when I got a tripod on a, a nice solid rock. Now, this picture is actually looking at the southwest of Sheffield. It's the area where I live and where I've walked from this morning. Looking at uh, Sheffield again, we're a little bit further north. You can see the white glow of the lights of the city centre. It does look a bit like the aftermath of an atomic bomber has been dropped on the, the city centre with that uh, white glow. Again, looking over the suburbs of Sheffield. Now I managed to get me tent in on this one. I put my headlamp inside the tent to sort of light it all up and then uh, took it on quite a long exposure. There was just a, a slight bit of movement, probably due to the wind, and that, that's blurred some of the uh, city lights. But uh, not a bad photograph, and I reckon I can do a lot better. Different angle, this one. Again, I got the tent in, and you can see the the glow the white glow of the the city center lights it does look like it's on fire years ago that would have been a, more of a reddish amber color when we had sodium vapor street lamps they've changed everything to led lighting now and that's why uh, you get the white light Good morning there. I've just woken up. I could see sort of the light outside uh, shining through the tent and I thought, ah, the sun must have been up. Probably missed it, but I'm happy in a nice warm sleeping bag. So I unzipped the tent and I was greeted with this beautiful view. The sun was just behind the cloud bank just about to rise so I quickly got my camera out now if you look carefully just below the Sun silhouetted against the cloud you can probably very small you can make out four cooling towers and a tall chimney that is in fact cotton cotton power station near Redford in Nottinghamshire and that's about 35 miles away. So I brought my camera back in the tent where it's nice and warm and I thought we'll watch this beautiful sunrise. You can, you can sort of feel the warmth of that sun as it rises and it, it's basically welcoming you to a new day. What a beautiful colour. Well, that was it. That were a beautiful sunrise. I get myself uh, up and sorted out, and then I think we'll get on with the uh, breakfast. I've got the sun. It's coming straight into the tent. I think first thing though, cup of coffee, warm me up, and uh, wake me up as well.
that tastes nice. Just gonna have this coffee and then a special treat, a couple of bacon sandwiches. Time to get on with these bacon sandwiches, I think. The sun is so bright, it has been difficult to film. I've got that camera, I've set it down to F16 because of the bright light. So hopefully it'll uh, compensate for it. So yeah, bacon sandwiches now. So we'll get some bacon in. Well, the bread's travelled okay. I did have thoughts it would have been all crushed. I hope you can smell that bacon. I certainly can. Yeah, they taste lovely. And you can't be bacon sandwiches. So hopefully this bright sunshine it'll have dried my tent out. Next job, I think, pack everything up. And I've got a nice rock to sit on round the corner. So another cup of coffee and I'll have a a last word with you before I go. That's all my gear packed away now. It's still very sunny, but it feels cold. You don't realize the protection that the, the tent gave you from the wind. Once you're out in the wind, you soon get cold. I must admit, one advantage of that Sulu, it was so easy to pack away. It took about five minutes to drop the tent, so easy. Another enjoyable camp. We've had good weather, good food, and a great location. What more could you ask for? Well, I'm going to make my way home now. I'm sort of eager to see if those photographs have worked out okay. I won't really know that till I put them on the computer. So, I'll see you on the next, next video soon. Bye then.